Okay, in this video, we're going to take a look at the mathematical area of combinatorics. And combinatorics is the study essentially of counting things. That's a bit of an oversimplification, but um, uh, that's what we'll use for now. And uh, in practice, that means using things like uh, factorial, binomial coefficients or combinations, and uh, permutation numbers for, for permutations. And um, what's really nice about this area of mathematics when used with a computer is that first of all, we can use a computer to just act as a, as a, as a very good calculator where we can say, give me this binomial coefficient or this permutation number or this factorial. But we can also use a computer to just create all the things we want to count and just count them. So for example, if you're asked in an exam, how many ways are there to arrange uh, the letters in the alphabet, uh, then theoretically you could write them all down and theoretically could count them. Uh, there are all sorts of reasons why you shouldn't do that. A, it would take an incredible amount of time for that particular example, but also you could make mistakes, right? You could, you could miss one, you could have more than, more than one copy of a particular way of doing it. So that's not a great approach. And so instead we would uh, use the mathematical tools that we have, so combinations, permutations, factorials, to count these things. Uh, <clears throat> however, with a computer, a computer is not going to make a mistake. If we say, computer, just create all of these things and count them for us. And so that's what we're going to see in, um, in this tutorial. So here's the tutorial, and here's a particular problem. The digits one, two, three, four, and five are arranged in a, in a random order to give a five-digit number. Uh, how many different five-digit numbers can be formed? So let, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm in my notebooks here. And let's create a Python one. Call it combinatorics. And we're going to get started. So the particular library we're going to use to create all these things is iter tools and iter tools is a lovely library because it lets us iterate over things in a very efficient way so it, it allows us to very quickly create these things we need our digits okay and python has this function called has this tool called range and what range does is it gives you six elements but starting at a given point so if i look at digits um, it actually always starts at zero, okay? So in our case, this would be the numbers zero, one, two, three, four, and five, um, which would be six digits, right? Because uh, we're counting zero. Um, so you can include another number at the start, and that limits it. And so that says, start at one and go as far as you would have. So it's starting at one up until not including six. And so that gives us the range of numbers from one to six. This at the moment isn't something we can do much with. That isn't actually the numbers. That's just the set of instructions to create the numbers. Um, and that's really important. It's actually a really nice aspect tool in Python because we can, for example, create that very quickly. That's an incredibly big number. 10 to the power of 10,000 is a, is a much bigger number than we'd have time uh, to ever write down. But the instructions to say all the numbers from one to that number, it takes the computer no time to create it. So, th so this range uh, command just creates the instructions that gives us our, our, our numbers. And we can use the tuple command to transform those instructions into a tuple of those actual numbers. And so there we go. If we do tuple of digits, we get one, two, three, four, five. What we're going to do is directly say, actually, I want my digits to be the tuple of the range one to six. And now we've got these digits and we can we can do things with them. And so what we want, what the question is asking us is how many permutations of those numbers exist. And to do that, I'm going to create a new variable called permutations. And I am going to use the permutations tool in the iter tools library, which just takes any iterable, and by an iterable, I mean something that you can iterate over. So a tuple is an example of that, because you can't iterate over it. And all it'll do is it'll just create all the permutations of it. Let's take a look at that. As before, though, what it's actually creating, what iter tools the permutations creates, 
is the instructions to create those those permutations. It hasn't actually done it yet. It's actually creating something called a generator, which is an incredibly powerful aspect of Python. Um, so we're going to do the same thing we did before with range and say, give me the tuple of it. So take these instructions and create the tuple out of them. And now if we look at the permutations, we see we've got them all there. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, five, four, and all the way through. And so immediately to answer the question, we can just go, what's the length of permutation? Lang is the Python tool that gives you the length of something. And so this essentially tells us how many things are in this outer bracket here. And if we do that, we get 120. Now, um, we can also calculate this and we can confirm we get the same results. We're gonna use the math library for that. And the number of permutations of the digits from one to five is simply uh, five factorial, which is indeed 120, all right? And so that's that first question, how many different five digit numbers can be formed? And you can see there in the tutorial that I go through in the same way. So then the next question is asking us, how many different five digit numbers are odd? So out of all these three things, if we put the numbers together, for example, 51432, uh, so 51,432, how many of these are odd? And that's essentially asking how many of these have an odd last digit. So we're just gonna think about that a little bit. And the way we're gonna tackle that is say, okay, given a small permutation, and so we're gonna use a little pi for that. So for example, five, one, three, four, two. All right, uh, what we want to know is, is pi five, which corresponds to the fifth element of it, is that odd or even? And the ones we wanna count are the odd ones, because we wanna know when the whole number is odd, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, all right, given our set of all of the permutations, so big pi, for every little pi in it, get me the sum of pi five mod two. Now, there's a couple of things to unpack here. So this sum just means I want you for every element of big pi, our set of all the permutations, to add up this quantity here. And this quantity here is the remainder when we divide pi five by two. And when you divide a number by two, the remainder is either gonna be zero or one. If it was three, then you could take another two out and you'd be left with one. And so this remainder is either gonna be um, one or zero. And when it's one, that means the number is odd. So this is just a way of immediately giving a value of one to all our elements in the permutations, okay? And um, essentially there's three things we need to write down in, in Python to get this sum. The red thing, the blue thing, and uh, the yellow thing, okay? So let's go ahead and, and do that. And the way we create that summation in, in Python is we more or less use the same language as we do in mathematics, so the sum function, that's the big sigma notation, that's that sum. And then we have this, uh, this uh, dummy variable, the pi, and so we're gonna write permutation. And we want the fifth element of a permutation. So in this particular case, a permutation would be one of these. The fifth element, we want that last one. And um, the way Python works is that the first element has index zero, the second one index one, two, three, and four. And the way you access those are with square brackets. There's more information about this in the how-to section of this chapter. And that we have, if I go back to here, um, oops, sorry, I'm missing the percentage two. And I'll put some brackets around that. What that is, if I go back to the board here, that's this expression. Okay, that's pi five mod two. That is permutation four percentage two. And so the last thing we need is this yellow part where we say what pi is and what big pi is. 
And the way we do that is we go for permutation in permutations. And if we run that, we get 72. Now, there's a couple of things to, to realize is that permutation here is a dummy variable. I, I could call this, um, well, I could call it pi. Or I could call it something else, pie and apple. And that just reflects that as soon as I write this four, the next thing I write is a dummy variable, okay? That can change. And really this is completely equivalent to the fact that in mathematics, um, when, we're, when we're doing essentially the, the same thing, when we say the sum of little pi belonging, ooh, that's not a sum, that's a product. Uh, the sum of little pi belonging to big pi of pi five mod two, this pi is just a dummy variable. And that's equivalent to me saying it's the sum of uh, the picture of a pineapple belonging to big pi of pineapple five mod two. Right. I mean, don't do this. That's silly. This is uh, a better and more readable uh, convention. Pies are often used to note permutations. And so likewise, um, this is fine. And this is really not a good idea. So I'll just delete that. And so you got 72. And then if you want to think about where this 72 comes from, sorry, let me scrub the water. If you want to think about where this 72 comes from, we can just have a little combinatorial uh, reflection, so to speak. And if we have a, a given pi, uh, let me go back to my blue pen, I don't know why. If we go back to our, our pi, which is the digits pi one, pi two, pi three, pi four, and pi five, right? Um, the number is odd, this number, is either one, three, or five. So we have three choices for that number. And then once we've made those three choices, we have four factorial choices for that number. So our overall count is three times four factorial. So let's, uh, let's confirm that. And so if we do three times math dot factorial four, we indeed get 72, which is which is the number we counted, okay? All right, so now the, the last question is, how many of these five digit numbers are less than 23,000, okay? We're gonna start off with, with the blackboard here, just so we can think a little bit. And this is often something that we need to do. So again, using code to do mathematics does not replace us, right? The whole point is it just allows us to do it efficiently. We still need to take the time to think these things through. And so given a permutation of these numbers, and I'm not going to write them out as the digits, I'm going to write them out specific, sorry, as the whole number, I'm going to write them out specifically as the collection of, of digits. So, so for example, if I had one, three, five, four, two, to get the number that that represents, okay, it's pi one times 10 to the four, plus pi two times 10 to the three, plus pi three times 10 squared, plus pi four times 10, plus pi five. Okay, that is uh, essentially taking those, those, four, those five digits and putting them in base 10. And so what we wanna know is when is this less than or equal to 23,000? And so the way we're gonna do this is to, again, use a summation. And we're gonna sum one, but now the thing that's important is what we're summing over, okay? So we only wanna sum over the things we want. And so that is the permutations inside our set of big permutations, of all the permutations. And then this if, I'm gonna write the word if here. And then really we're just taking this statement and we're gonna just put it there. So pi one, 10 to the four plus pi two, 
tens cubed plus pi three uh, ten squared plus pi four times ten plus pi five is less than or equal to twenty three thousand. All right, and that is a mathematical way of saying we want to count these these things. All right. So that's what we're going to do. And, and so again, everything's going to be very similar to what we can write down mathematically. We're going to say we want to sum, and that'll be using the Python sum command. We're going to say we want the number one. And so that'll just be literally the number one. And then what we're going to have is um, this thing again, which is for our elements pi belonging to big pi for permutation and permutations. And then this part, will actually be written exactly like it is there. So let's go ahead and, and write that code out. So it's the sum of one for permutation in permutations, all right? Now I'm about to write a really long line of code and I could write it all in one line, but it wouldn't be nice and easy to read. We'd have to scroll left and right. And so um, I'm just gonna put some, uh, line breaks in the correct places. You'll see I'm just pressing enter and Jupyter knows where to put things. Sometimes if you put them in the wrong place, Jupyter, uh, sorry, Python will, will give you an error message. In general, if you put something where it's obvious that you're expecting something else on the next line, Python will be okay. Um, and now we write if, and so then I write permutation, the first element of permutation times 10 to the power of four plus permutation one times 10 to the power cube plus permutation two times 10 to the power squared plus permutation three times 10. Let me put a space there just so it still looks nice. Plus permutation uh, four, and we want all of that to be less than or equal to 23,000, all right? Uh, that's less than or equal, strictly less than and equal. And if we go ahead and, and run that, we get 30. So let's have a little think. Does 30 make sense? Go over to the whiteboard over here, sorry, the blackboard over here. And um, considering one of these numbers, pi one, pi two, pi three, pi four, pi, Five. If we want that to be less than or equal to 23,000, our constraints are really on this on this first number here, and, and likewise on, on that one a little bit. So pi one can only actually be one or two, okay? If it's one, so if our number starts with one and, um, and we have room for the four others, well, any of those options can will give us a number that's less than 23,000. So we've got, we've got four factorial choices of that. If, however, the first number is two, then the, the second number has to be one. And then after that, we've got three valid choices for the others. And there are three, sorry, uh, I don't know why I apologize. It's not the end of the world if I use the wrong color. Uh, three factorial choices for, for those. So we got four factorial plus three factorial. Let's go double check if that indeed gives us 30. Indeed, we've got 30. And that's that question, and it's all, all in there, and you can work your way. Uh, through that and please um, do. The how-to section, once you've gone through the tutorial, so we, we talk about tuples a little bit, all right? So how to access a particular element, we, we've seen that when at the end there we're doing permutation zero, one, two, et cetera. Creating Boolean variables, we did that right at the end where we did less than or equal to a number. There are other ways of creating Boolean variables as well. Uh, creating an iterable with a given number of items, that's what we did right at the start, that was that range command creating permutations of a given set of elements and creating combinations of a given set of elements. So we did do creating permutations. We use the iter tools dot permutations and combinations where order doesn't matter is done the exact same way. And then finally, 
Uh, we've got adding items in a, tu in a tuple, so that's some command, adding them together. And then we did do direct computation of n factorial, um, but there's also uh, tools available to us to directly compute the binomial coefficient um, uh, n choose i, and then also the permutation number as well. So go ahead and work through this, then move on to the exercises. The solutions are there for you as well, and then there is some further information that you might find useful as well. And yeah, I, I think this is really quite a nice chapter because um, here is really where we can gain a lot of insight. So uh, often when we, we're trying to solve combinatorial problems, it's helpful to write down some small examples to get an idea of what's happening. And then we go, oh, okay, yeah, I see why it's this many options for that and this many options for that. With a computer, we can do that very, very quickly and at much larger scale. So it's a really useful area of mathematics. Um, combinatorics is a really, really uh, prominent area of the use of uh, programming uh, in mathematics.